Now in the bottom half of the second, here on Flow Baseball, no score in game two of a doubleheader between the Tobs and the Marlins. Morehead City took game one, an 11-10 thriller that had only four scoreless halves of innings. So it just tells you how many fireworks there were in that game. Six homers. Just tells you how much Seven fun. homers. Seven homers. Seven homers. Three by the Marlins, four by the Tobs. Uh, yes, Drew Devine did have himself two dingers. So seven bombs, much better than six, that's for sure. More fireworks as Connor Van Cleve hits a foul ball behind home plate. Van Cleve comes out of Pitt State, 328 on the year, five homers, 20 RBIs. So here's a ground ball over to first. That's fielded cleanly by Jepson. He makes the unassisted out. And there's one gone here in a second. Yeah, Bragg has done a better job keeping the Marlins a little bit off balance here in the beginning of his start than Prayer, the starter in game one, did. Yeah. So as Eric was talking about Bragg, he's still on the mound for the tops. Has himself two Ks, keeping the pitch count pretty low as well. Only 15 so far, 80% of his pitches have been strikes. As Joe Mason comes up to the plate, he's in left field once again. That's where he was in game one. As he looks at strike one, he went one for four in that first game. Three strikeouts. Not the stat line you want to hear if you're Joe. Here comes the 0-1. A big swing and a miss there. And the Mount Olive product is down 0-2. Also made a critical base running error late in the game. Oh, yes, he did. Marlins were able to overcome it, though. Warren City got the bases loaded, bases loaded walk, and then a wild pitch. Scored the 11th run for Moorhead City, and it was a good thing that it scored the 11th run because the Tobbs responded with a solo homer to make it an 11-10 ball game. That's how it ended. As Mason looks at ball one, the count's now one and two. Bragg delivers. A breaking ball over to the left side, fielded by Scaranda. The throw over to first is not in time. Jepson couldn't field the throw. It was sort of a weak one from Scaranda. I mean, the, when you make that sort of running play, it's going to be... And Mason's aboard. Yep, that speed, you're going to have to make a Nolan Arnato type play over oh, there yeah. to get Joe Mason. And that wasn't able to be done. So it's an infield single for Joe Mason. That's the first hit of the game. And now Dominic Bucko comes up to the plate. He's the center fielder. He came in during game one, midway through game one. Pinch hit for Sean Johnson. Actually, pinch hit for him. Went one for one in two at bats. Two runs scored. That's the first pitch to the Youngstown State Penguin. Is ball one. Bucko's been all over the lineup. This is let off. He's been in the nine spot. He's hitting sixth in game two. But Bucko's just moving around the order, both he and Joe Mason. Yeah, it doesn't really matter where you put him. You know he's going to be productive. Right. You know he's going to make things happen. And I would argue his value rises even more at the bottom of the lineup than it does at the top. Because the Marlins have the dudes at the top. They need help with the guys at the bottom. And Bucko can definitely bring that. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. A swing and a miss makes it strike two. Bucko not showing the shot, not showing the socks though. It's always, it's always changes. I think changes it's just the what he's, the way the wind's blowing for Dom. Oh, and there's a pickoff move from Bragg that almost got away from him. Almost got away from Jepson. That is the throw was well wide. To Jepson's left. Mason is the one that leads off at of first. Just got aboard with that infield single. 
Here comes the one, two. Bucko fouls it down the third base line out of play. Officially 9 o'clock Eastern time here at the Rock. Could possibly be a late one once again. Possibly. Most definitely. There you go. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure the party agreed with me. Here comes the one-two. That goes high. The count's even. I think our fate is sealed, my friend, for having a long night. Yeah. It's a good thing, though, that this doubleheader and the one yesterday didn't start at 6 o'clock because we had that Sunday doubleheader that started at 6 yeah, what were we thinking? It's past us. You live and you learn. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. That is well inside. The count's full now. Mason's still leading off a first. As the Marlins try to be the first ones to answer. The Tobbs had that. Got that award as Mason goes on the full count. It's ball four. Mason was going to get in either way. But now Bucko's aboard with a base on balls. And Jordan Johnson has the chance to bring the boys around. The third baseman from the University of Arkansas. Good at bat there from Bucko. Got some tough pitches with two strikes from Bragg and was able to lay them all, lay off of all of them. Johnson getting the nod once again. Started in game one at third base, doing the same here in game two. Two for three. Two RBIs, two runs scored in, in that twilight game. As now Mason leads off a second. Bucko leads off a first. Neither of them being held on. And Johnson fouls the first pitch back. Jordan Johnson was one of the offensive heroes of game one for the Marlins. Yes. Without him, I'm not sure the Marlins win. That's for certain. That is for certain. Need. I'm almost certain that they don't win. Yeah. I think Wilson definitely would have won that game without Jordan Johnson's impact. With how crucial these two games are, that's that's for sure. Here comes the 0-1. Now Johnson is in a big hole down 0-2. But a win for the Marlins in game two gives Moorhead City a three-game lead over Wilson. A loss... Puts Moorhead City back into a one-game lead where it was at the start of this doubleheader. So right now, the Marlins have a two-game lead over the Tobbs. You have to factor in Peninsula as well. That is who true. Who was tied with Wilson coming in. So Johnson fouls it back. We'll do the 0-2 again. Bottom of the eighth inning at War Memorial and Tri-Cities up 3-1 to one on the Pilots. It's always good news. The Pilots already clinched a spot in the CPL playoffs. Won the first half of the East. The Savannah Bananas did so in the West. With two men on, Bragg fires the 0-2. Just misses outside. Will and Weber like the spot. Now it's 1-2. and two. It's a good job by Jordan Johnson. Jordan Johnson of a couple weeks ago would have swung at that pitch. I but his eye has sharpened up. All of his mechanics at the plate have, and that's why you've seen so much more production. One and two, the count on the Arkansas Monticello product. This time is called. Bragg taking a little too long to find his sign. Inning and a third, one hit, one walk, two Ks so far for Braxton Bragg, the righty out of Nebraska. He delivers and misses low and outside. The count's even. Pretty good crowd here on a Saturday night. I would say bigger than last night, question mark? I think so. A, a little bit more. Had around fifteen or 1,400 in here last night. Yep. Bucko with the leadoff of first. Mason with the leadoff second. Middle infield playing close to that second base bag as Johnson swings and misses at strike three. That probably would have been ball three, but you can't think about it now as Robbie O'Neill looks to do Johnson's job. 
Yep. Sometimes you just can't lay off the high cheese. And now Robbie O'Neill, who had a extra base hit in that huge inning yesterday, maybe that boosted his confidence a little bit. This would be another huge confidence booster to get a base knock and break the scoring open here in game two. O'Neill, the UNCG Spartan, didn't start game one. It was Zach Miller, who was behind the plate. O'Neill getting the nod for game two as he fouls the first pitch back and out of play on the third base side. That foul ball brought to you by Windows and More. For Windows or Doors, call Windows and More. 252-726-8. O'Neill's hitting 103 on the season. This is his 40th at bat in 2021. Four RBIs on the year. Doesn't have a homer to his name. As Bragg fires the 0-1. A swing and a miss there. A big one from O'Neill. Who got down on one knee. And the switch hitter is down 0-2. Jack Casbero, the second baseman, is on deck. As the pickoff moves over to second, almost got away from Devine. The shortstop tried to play it off, run, running towards center field to pretend like the ball got out of his glove. Mason didn't fall for it, and thank goodness he didn't because Joe Mason has gotten picked off twice over there at second base in these past few games. Drew Devine's a goofy guy. He knows he has a mouse in the house with Mason out there. This ball gets away from Woolen Weber. A wild pitch will advance Joe Mason. Dominic Bucko heads over to second, and the count's now one and two. There they are for Robbie O'Neill. Let's see if he can make something happen here and give the Marlins the early lead. Wilson got out to the lead first in game one. Marlins trying to flip the script here. Always got to get on top. Got to get yourself a good lead as well against these Wilson Tobbs. Very hard to put away as Bragg delivers the one, two. Mm. Got him on strikes. Down looking goes O'Neal. Another strikeout for Bragg. That's his fourth on the game. As we're through two here at the Rock. No score on Flow Baseball. <laughs> 